Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me. Paulina here chatting to you a little bit uh, about the moon happening, the new moon happening on the 28th of July. It is going to be, of course, in Leo. It is now only the 17th of July, so you guys have plenty of time. Um, wonderful. Um, so the main thing basically is to understand where we are not very well supported and where we are and not to take it personally, so not to take it to heart. If you don't have anybody showing up to your YouTube channel, if you have no money from a job that you are trying to do, if you are not getting anywhere, the main thing is to stop and listen. So we have a very, very nice and um, proud uh, Jupiter next to Fortune on the day, uh, close to Chiron. You just have to get wise. So uh, sometimes it's very, very hard and heavy, I feel, for uh, all of us, because sometimes uh, Leo represents childhood and childhood dreams. In these early degrees, it is definitely about us and our thinking patterns and our knowledge and um, what we think that we're about and what we believe that we should concentrate on. So quite a lot of us who do sometimes take um, things personally, sometimes just have a very, very big chip on our shoulders or a very, very sore past. So um, in terms of taking things to heart and... Um, also, on the other hand, taking things too lightly, it's about the proportion that our family has set up for us. So if you have a very distant or improportionate family uh, for some reason, or if you have not been uh, raised very kindly, sometimes uh, these fractures are going to show during this time. So also we have a black moon Lilith right next to uh, Venus there and Cancer trailing behind the sun. It's a very, very hard um, responsibility, very hard opportunity to miss. You know, sometimes people get so jealous. For example, if you really have met somebody that you really want to be with or you have almost gotten to that state or you have almost touched that next thing and it um, runs away from you or it just swims off into a different direction, it's very, very, very hard. So, if you've ever been near a very big, um, very big breakthrough or a very big pain, very big loss, um, it's a very, very intense energy. It's uh, like things just brushing past you. So, for example, meeting the person of your dreams and them um, not being available for you or your computer crashing just as you're like making your next big project and you haven't saved it. Try to save everything you can. Um, it's a very, very important window here to be careful and to get things right. Um, Leo, at this point, will expect you to do things very creatively, but also very correctly. It's a very hardcore Leo month uh, coming. So it's not just about willy-nilly kind of making it through. We want to see results and we want to see them good. And some of the time, um, not many people are prepared to take it to that next level. So like cleaning up and sprucing up and being the best that you can be, that's a really, really big ask. And it's already um, a big telling as to where that might be. So I feel that already by now um, in Cancer, you might already have a quite a good idea as to where you're meant to be or where your uh, bonus points are or where you are doing pretty good. Um, and it's not about doing super well. It's just about um, being savory also sometimes for other people. And that's probably the hardest thing for, for me, I think for a lot of people, um, to be able to please an audience or to be able to make it through, like say in the job where you are not alone, you have other factors, even like the weather or like the economic uh, situation in the world um, holding things for you. So it's not just you and your wits anymore. It's a conglomerate collective thing that we're looking at. And yes, there's a very strong Saturn um, up above um, in the opposite sign of Aquarius to Leo. So it's going to be a very, very hard tell if it's going to um, make it or not. And uh, yes, there's also Mars next to Uranus North Node. So there's going to be an epic culmination for at least some of you guys in terms of your purpose, in terms of things that you uh, feel are um, for your pleasure. It's a big yay or nay sign. It's a big squeezing through that next level of um, who you want to be or what you've been talking about is also a very big showing if you've been doing, say, predictive astrology and now you are finding that there is a real seed to what you're doing. You can be very, very on point about um, what you're doing and who you are. It's a very, very pointy 
pointy question mark also that sometimes this holds. Um, people might come up to you and um, ask you really mean questions sometimes in this time. Like, do you really know what we're talking about? Do you really have the skills? Like, have you really got the CV that matters to get this job? Um, so there is a very, very mean streak sometimes that happens by the end of cancer anyway. And it's going to continue into Leo. So I'm going to um, try and set you guys up early. So it's important not to be mean. It's so important not to be mean, even if you don't even think that you are. It's important to also take criticism and understand if you are actually being out of line. I think quite a lot of us that are raised in very uh, mean or unhumble families, sometimes who don't know that we are doing the things or saying those things that other people just really cringe at. And uh, I'm one of those people sometimes as well. So like if you have that about you and if you do like say have the power of speech or the power of branding or marketing or, or doing anything, um, if you have the power of sound, please be very, very careful as to how you are putting yourself together because it is very, very hard if you really like don't know yourself and if you push somebody's buttons and yeah, people can yell at you, cry like question you like why did you do that why did you like say that why did especially when it comes to official um formats official paperwork so um here's a very easy window to get pursued by the cops uh, or like any law enforcement agencies tax agencies anything um, and people asking you what are you doing why are you doing that so it's a very very interesting window to also still squeeze through and do what you want to do and that's huge so there is a creative giant potential in leo especially um this month around in july august it's very very big this year um we uh, all know that this is the year of the tiger now and tiger of course loves leo um it's not as simple as just matching feline signs from two completely opposite spectrums of information it's um also understanding how it works so by july you should have a really good grasp and grip um, on yourself. So usually with the Chinese astrology, July, especially in the Northern Hemisphere where it is sunny, the middle of the summer, you should really have a good grasp on you. So if you are living in the Northern Hemisphere, which I presume you probably do, uh, most of um, my, my friends uh, on YouTube do, um, if you are living in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, it is very likely that the weather would naturally push you towards achievement in this uh, climatic time of the year. But if you haven't got it in you and you feel that you're insincere and if you are aching and if your bones or your bowels or your body or your mind or your state of significance or your childhood trauma is preventing you from doing that thing, that's hard. And um, here's how to um, find out more. So basically, to me, it feels that it's a very, very nice and sympathetic month at this time to work it out before this moon happens. So solidity um, is what uh, Leo offers. Quite a lot of us struggle with Leo energy because it is so grotesque sometimes because it just wants to be compact and it just wants to build its building. It's, it's like a king wanting to build his castle from whatever looks pretty good to him. And um, sometimes people that have a lot of independence um, don't usually like um, the sign of Leo and um, have not really a lot to do there. I have a Leo ascendant here in Peru, which is uh, ironic. Uh, it's very uh, iconic as well. It's amazing. It's interesting. Because like this uh, encapsulating, like, yeah, let's stamp this in. Let's package it up. Yeah, let's put this brick in the ground kind of feeling. And then put some bricks on top of that and put some cement over the top of that. So this feeling of wanting to structure and wanting to pull things into a tangible uh, sort of a format can be very offensive to some people. So after this kind of sulky and slightly melancholic cancer and very, very juicy, very juicy time for some of us, like cancer is one of the best signs for cleansing, for cracking your system. Um, you know, I have uh, had a little relationship with uh, Chirik Sananga uh, plant uh, during this time. I'm still drinking it. So like that, that's that's how I'm unpacking my unpackaging myself and I'm also learning more about other Peruvian plants. You can really take yourself to the limit. It's because it's so easy. It's that easy. Everything is very slip and slide and cancer. But then all of a sudden we get this. We get this because there is like almost like a closing of a door or like kind of a hand in the face that sometimes Leo um, makes. It's like stop. Like stop trying or stop stop this. Now let's make this compact. Let's make it viable. Let's make it sellable. Let's make it marketable. Let's make it friendly. Let's make it people friendly. Let's make it obvious. Let's make it uh, a destination. Let's make it a secure vision. 
So that search for security that happens by the end of Cancer within itself, it's like a little sulky, it's a little bit kind of like mulchy, it's kind of like a bit teary. Um, it happens for a reason, it's um, that softness that we need to really, really um, have our finger in the pulse and to figure out what is natural, what is the most um, contained and also not demeaning and sometimes people get really sulky and kind of juicy and sort of like um, a little bit watery by the end of cancer because they really really want to make sure that they uh, design things right and they want to make sure that they don't repeat um, the patterns of their past or the mistakes of their parents and sometimes it is a little bit sulky and then all of a sudden um, this uh, cancer month yeah you know by the end there is also Eros and Ceres in the, in the sky and, and the first degrees of, of, um, of Leo there is Ceres it's kind of like gaining confidence and it's just like trying to open this next frontier and just as cancer like says hey look at this book that I've written or like hey you know what I got an idea or like you know what when I was a kid and I never really got my parents and now I understand why I'm like this so when cancer gets juicy and, and goopy and lovely and wonderful and when um, she uh, energetically like cancer is a very feminine sign exposes this next la layer of who she is or that next level um, Leo says okay right let's package this up like, let's put this into a photo album. Like, let's just offer it to somebody. Hey, let's sell this. Hey, guys, let's sell this. And that's really hard. So, like, if you are creative, I think that you'll know this. Um, it's a very interesting interaction between Cancer and Leo. Like, if we really look at this IC um, sector, um, this uh, bourgeois sector <laughs> of, um, of the Zodiac, I mean, there's, like, you know, eating and enjoying and being abundant and Taurus and then being social and being, like, a little bit of a sparkle and Gemini. And then there is this kind of, like, the IC, the actual IC. And then there's, like, this homely pedantic cancer and then there's this like ruler of all rulers um leo um at the like at the bottom of the chart but he's also kind of like a child so like the fifth house is still a sort of undeveloped energy but it's all just about like i, I want to be juicy i want to be funny i want to talk to somebody i want to share abundance and also share what what i've got share my worth this is like the root system of the chart and um you can tell a lot by a person if they got a lot happening in the root system uh, of the chart in the third, fourth house. Uh, it's a very, very interesting time. So like all this juiciness and all this abundance, if you're a creative person, if you make money through creativity, you know the struggle. It's like, like, oh gosh, I'm so happy and like I'm in such a good place. Or like I'm so smart or like I'm so fun just for myself. You know, this is what hobbyism is. Making a hobby painting it's not about copying the Mona Lisa and then showing somebody how good you did that is 10th house stuff it's not necessarily about that it's about making um, a curious uh, thing for yourself doing something that is curious for yourself uh, creating curiosity and also creating curiosity in another person as well as yourself hey look what I made I made this with my hands um, there is a big um, feeling in the sky also with followers at the top yeah anything is possible yes you can make your dreams um, come true with this follows, um in the first five degrees of uh, Capricorn definitely you can structure a future out of a dream that you had as a kid or like out of some knickknacks that you like to make by yourself it's a very, very interesting um, time for uh, um, entrepreneurs and creatives and energy developers. But you see, there is this really big scope, you see, and um, some of us don't get past a certain level. It's like if you can imagine um, you're running and you can get caught. It's like that kind of feeling. Um, if you've seen, you know, some, it's like the Hunger Games, I think, like these wacky movies, uh, that are all about that. I'm not trying to put that into the video, but you know, it's like, it's almost like you're running and somebody can catch you and tackle you. So there is like a, a little bit of a weird anxiety um, because not every turtle makes it out to sea. So what I mean is if you've seen these nature documentaries about uh, the breeding cycle of different animals um, and breeding is kind of fifth house, you know, it's eighth and fifth house, okay. So breeding, uh, making babies or creating futures or making plans or having certain things you launch into the world, like your books or your materials, your visuals, your art, anything. Um, sometimes not every turtle makes it, you know. So uh, the big turtle goes out to the sand and, you know, buries its eggs. 
And uh, sometimes, you know, if they don't get uh, excavated by, I don't know, humans and, you know, dogs or whatever, like um, they hatch and they go, this is really heartbreaking sometimes, yeah, to see these videos. So they, little, little turtles, you know, go out um, by themselves uh, into the ocean and they have to fight uh, the elements and they're just born. They don't know nothing. They're just basically driven entirely by instinct and maybe some information they got from their mother. Um, biologically and they basically go into the ocean and they have to withstand so many elements and basically just fend for themselves like as soon as they hatched as, as soon as they hatched um, which is an incredible feat uh, and what a strong animal is the turtle <laughs> so um, also yeah why am I talking about this um, just to basically be able to understand that not everybody makes it so if you are also doing a multi-concept it's an interesting idea to launch it in multiple places. So maybe your music is not understood by uh, the global brand that you're interested in, but it is interested uh, in itself in a different way. So maybe this is very good uh, computer game music that you're making. Maybe it's really good for your circle of friends. Maybe it needs a click. Maybe it needs a fashion statement, you know. So um, not everything is how you have programmed it to be. That's really hard for me. That's really hard for me to understand. So it's like, for example, you're making something and you believe it'll take the attention of somebody and that person walks past and you're like, I failed, I failed, I can't get the attention of that person. Um, but actually who you are set up to uh, get the attention uh, from by a product or that which you're doing um, is a completely different person. Maybe it's a completely different product that you're designing. It just takes a special eye and that's really hard. So don't lose faith. I'm somebody who's been through design school, I used to work as an illustrator, and I still do sometimes, but not, not really. Um, if you look up Lina Utkin illustration, you will see my illustrations. Uh, it says um, illustrator Melbourne, uh, it's when I was in Melbourne still, crazy, st crazy story. Um, so like say, if you are making anything, just understand that you have to have a very, very good audience and a keen eye, don't be afraid to disperse your materials, and also don't be afraid of the crazy looks like wow, this is crazy work, or like, we can't allow this, like, we can't allow that on TV, or like, wow, we're not doing this. Um, so this is not just a channel for creatives, of course. Um, I've got ample experience in creative fields, that's why I'm sharing it, I guess, is how my mind works. But like, let's uh, build your blog. I'm serious. I mean, this is the time. Um, if you're interested in shining your creative talents, why am I talking about this? Because it's a very humanitarian time, it's a very cozy time, it's wonderful to be a personality, it's wonderful to do it alone, it's wonderful to build your um, business from the roots up. Also, uh, Jupiter is next to fortune during this time, and Aries, consider that. So there is a very, very big sentimental appeal that a very unique person can carry during this type of window. And if you have what it takes, you will be surprised at how good it looks for somebody. It's just very, very important that you don't hold in your mind's eyes to who it is because conflicts and aggression and butting heads and people saying, no, 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 you can't speak about this on camera, you can't do this in our restaurant, you can't sell this in our shop, um, all of that is going on. And also um, people can shut down and just like quieten down for years before they have another window to speak. And that's really important to understand. So I think that um, many of us don't have maybe the reason here to understand what we are doing or producing or creating. And yeah, I'm coming back to the creative things, you know, making an entrepreneurial career, making creative uh, stance or making some kind of music business or something, anything you're doing collectively, creatively, or just for yourself as a human, don't be afraid of people are mean. People are going to be a little bit um, angry or ugly uh, with each other during this window and I do understand I'm prepared for that I do understand that is also part of the friction that's needed to separate the different layers like a scoby of society and um, that is a very interesting time for me so we are choosing our heroes and we're also choosing our concepts and our developers and developments and how we live and who we are connected to and how we get behind the wheel of life and who we are next to eventually at the end of it all um, depends on uh, where we go. So there's lots of different tastes and there's lots of different journeys. There's lots of different ways of marketing businesses. There's lots of different cryptocurrencies, of course. There's lots of different maniacs out there. There's lots of really amazing, good people. There's lots of different worlds. Um, so this um, frivolous way in which uh, nature seems to have shown you the best, probably, of who you are and who you have around or 
the best way to be maybe there is like almost like an exposition like a natural exposition of um, what is going on and what is yet to be all of this I feel um, is not futile at all I don't think there is a uh, futile uh, like a futile sediment in this uh, frequency in the sequence I don't think there's anything bad anything mean anything weird about it it's just that we don't fully quite yet know how to use it all. Um, every single um, concept is different. Uh, people are mutating. Also, every single organ, organic tissue is different. We're changing tissues uh, as a collective because of uh, recent events in the world. Um, we are making a, a difference. We're trying to be somebody else. We're trying to make it this way. And um, there is abundance and there is diversity and there is more than enough now. I feel that a lot of people actually know how to make it and how to get there. And yes, of course, there is differentiation and then there is a different tribe for, for probably every single person. But we don't all have to be in the one simple tribe. We don't necessarily all have to be in a gathering to be able to make it. It's just more about concepts and survival you know sometimes your work is just like a floating little boat like paper boat out in the sea until it is next to something or somebody else better than that you know sometimes like uh, we don't really understand how it's all going to go or grow or give or deliver until we have that next spring or that next point of self-respect and um, I think that's what um, it's all trying to find itself um, is a bit of self-respect and sustenance. So cancer sometimes can wash a person out, especially if you've been eating a lot and, you know, doing some art and like sort of like sitting there smoking weed or something like that. If you have also been like a little bit of a parasite to somebody, for example, if you've been only like listening and not speaking and if you have not really wanted to do anything or participate um sometimes it's this juicy quality of cancer makes people very lazy and kind of bohemian and their approach to everything it's a very very hard life to live sometimes especially in the times that are coming to the world um it's a very very harsh climate that we're coming into socially and uh, psychologically socio-psychologically actually and politically and uh, it's not a demeaning thing it's just really really important that we see how we can tighten things up in the end, in the back end of cancer, so that we don't um, basically throw up all of those beautiful nutrients and those beautiful insights during Leo time. So we have to make sure that the shift, as I'm feeling, is very hard uh, between cancer and uh, Leo this year, that we don't forget ourselves and our souls and uh, keep in time and realize what's right. So um, I'm speaking to you here on the 17th of July. Uh, it's still plenty of time to consider your results and your actions and your words and how you would uh, later on lace what you are making or uh, create what you're creating so it's a very very um, deep and meaningful time I feel for quite a lot of souls um, I feel that some of us don't even know we're part of something we can't even believe I feel that quite a few of us have been dropped in uh, some very interesting scenes and very epic communities. I feel that there is nothing but safety. Like, for example, for me, like living here in Peru, I think that there are people that are going to be incredibly safe and well seen. I feel that there are people with incredible supporters during this time. I believe that there is people with incredibly good work and a well uh, managed portfolio just in time for the change of energy, just in time for, for the big shift. I feel that uh, with fifth house illumination always there is a huge health uh, scare sometimes for people and uh, sometimes uh, there is a change of endocrine health or uh, system needed so there is like a big big change over uh, in terms of how we use our time what is uh, delightful now that used to be ugly or negative before what is needed now that used to be distant before so like how people find um, themselves what they find in each other and how they deliver what they do is different so that sense sensitivity the sensibility about music and arts and you know what people say out loud and how people dress or how people work with themselves even how people uh, work with their own organs uh, is, is a different game it's a different uh, story it's a completely different journey for us and um, I do definitely trust that there are a lot of believers out there that don't necessarily want to be where they are yet but here we are so like you know these houses in the hills like seriously in the hills like it's amazing uh yeah you know like houses in the hills or like uh these very interesting cabins or um curious artist uh, conglomerates and people that are doing permaculture and uh, starting completely new families that's all happening but it's not the only way to be 
And of course, there are like um, very, very many different ways to just, uh, yeah, whatever. Like I'm, I'm doing my thing. Sure, I'm, I'm on TikTok every day. Like it's, it's whatever. Like it gives me joy, and that's also enlightening. So like that's the thing. It's like I feel that almost everybody, or everybody is going to have a place in the world. It's just more important that we don't um, excruciate over it. We don't fight it anymore. And I think it's like a very, very wonderful thing to understand that all of you fits within a certain journey, and that's crazy. So this is where the emulsion of cancer makes sense in Leo. That's really, really uh, crazy to me. I mean, imagine fitting all of you into the one place. Um, so uh, at the moment, I'm starting another channel. Uh, this is about uh, not necessarily ayahuasca use. It's just about uh, plant medicines, also about um, human psychology, uh, collective sickness and all of that. So it's very, very discreet little channels only got 10 subscribers so if you'd like please have a look um you might like it it's, it's quite risque the information is very bad for the internet but yeah it's it's, it's good as well so uh that's happening and uh also there is a uh, music channel that i'll be uh putting together properly uh by the end of the month probably probably um if it's ready it's probably going to be in the links below and if it's not sorry um, so yeah, there is a very, very nice way that uh, we are ready and we're prepared just in time also for some things. It's kind of like a squeezing through the eye of the needle, which is what Tiger Year will do. So uh, what else? Uh, balancing the karmas and the endocrine health and trying to uh, keep on keeping on um, pulling all of that which you have in your mind into the one question mark helping everybody that you can to get through this one door, doing all of that which you do and still being noticed for the right things and not being uh, scrutinized. Also in terms of our society being very backward uh, and majority of the world, you know, they're putting their fingers in you, you know, like saying like, this is great. Now that, you don't do that. You can't say that out loud. You know, like all of that stuff is um, starting to get tired, all the censorship and this obsession with the details. And I do understand that even um, common folk that only like five years ago were so happy the censorship um, existed and they were so happy and they were so safe um, are now understanding that censorship has brought uh, to them some states of vulnerability and some inability to actually function. And then it takes a loud mouth like myself or maybe like yourself um, to crack it. So um, that's the thing. I feel that we don't necessarily have to fight it now. Mm, the wrongs done before, like the ugliness or the protrusions. Um, there is like a very, very weird way in which nature has uh, collaborated with humanity. And there is an awful way even. It's awful, it's angular, it's ugly, it's unsavory sometimes as to what comes out of a person or how they are uh, put together. So like there is like a very odd taste that is coming out. There is a strangeness that is coming to the world. There is a uh, very, very good and very, very normal way of looking at some things that uh, previously people were really scared of, like uh, abortion rights, uh, like religion, like hysterical media, like all of this stuff about politics. You know, people are now starting to open your eye, uh, their eyes and, you know, hold themselves together and have respect for people with alternative mindset because those people actually know a little bit better sometimes. And it's important to um, get everybody involved. So I feel very, very lucky to be operating in this time because the alternative cultures and alternative mindsets are starting to be uh, interesting and lucky for some people. So usually it takes a tiger year to break through. If you don't want to do it yet, uh, why not? So like, um, just you wait, maybe nature will do it for you. So I uh, do believe that some of us don't want to do it yet. I feel that we are holding on to our safety and a sense of security. I do definitely understand why that is. I do definitely understand you if you're saying nobody gets to see my artwork. I am not putting it online. I get you. Somebody is going to eventually see it. Um, maybe even um, after you go, uh, it's still going to get out there. You know, some people say, I don't want to talk about what I feel or what I think. I can't speak my mind. Uh, right now is probably the era to do it. Um, you've been waiting for probably centuries to do it um, and to, you know, not necessarily sugarcoat anything at all. So I talked about sugarcoating and censorship in the previous um, month uh, quite a lot. Um, there's a sugarcoating that sometimes happens in cancer. It's a very, very interesting time to uh, speak about health and candida and bad diets and... Uh, you know, uh, parasites and bugs and things that grow in the stomach tissues and lining and, 
you know, obsessions and uh, vulgarity that is hidden under like beautiful taste. All of that stuff is happening right now. It's uh, really overbearing, you know, like Instagram model by day, you know, like a crying wreck uh, by night, you know, all of that stuff uh, is happening out there. And there is like an ugliness to the most perfect uh, universe uh, that everybody's ever expected to see. So this veneer, the veneer is uh, coming out, is falling off. And I'm very, very lucky to be here today as I, I never really grew one. I never had one. So that's awesome. I feel, I feel good about that. So like anyway, about uh, this education of the masses and uh, helping other people survive it, um, I feel that this crudeness and this angular way um, that people are going forward is actually the most beautiful sign of the times. I feel that this interesting kind of slightly extraterrestrial edge to anything we do say and think is a very, very interesting development. This um, ugliness or this crudeness to this uh, time that we're living in is actually one of the most uh, gorgeous things. And, you know, if we think about uh, the great eras, you know, where a lot of people had, for example, syphilis, like in, in the Victorian era, was very common. Um, or people had like HIV, like there was like a big sweep of um, HIV in the 90s. You know, we actually do still thrive in society. And sometimes these are the most memorable eras. And um, when it comes to some very interesting, I know this sounds very automatic and it sounds kind of cold, um, you know, as I'm doing kind of like this global psyche analysis, uh, please forgive me if you feel this is cold, um, some of the most beautiful art um, that I have ever seen and some of the most beautiful music that has ever touched my heart came from a very, very insincere time in history. I talk a little bit about in this um, video series that I've just uh, put up about human evolution on my other channel. Please have a look. It's in the caption section below. And uh, yeah, a lot of it is about how uh, we transcend ourselves as a human race and as a body, energetically also consciously. And quite often we need a certain type of uh, crisis or a certain type of like point of no return in order to be available to create miracles. Um, so it's like Superman won't just show up if there's no villain. So there is a villain. And there are different types of that villain in the world today. And uh, I feel that there is a Superman inside so many different diverse people, communities, ethnicities and cultures that is coming through in a majority, like a majority, <laughs> in an epic amount of ways, you know. So it's not just like a one way that we stand together. Um, right now, it's not going to work this way. I feel it's very good to be a hero just for yourself sometimes and if it is like four or five people that get uh, spicy with you and they feel emotional uh, next to you and they feel that they've done the best job they can of their life uh, next to you and if you are very powerful and very uh, how can I say significant for somebody else even if it's like seven people around you that you know it doesn't have to be the whole of internet, of course, or the whole of your society or like where you live. It needs to be, I feel, uh, like congratulated because the whole point of a uh, tiger year is to get to this point of relevance. If you are relevant and if you have what it takes and you feel that you've built yourself this incredible muscle or if you have really, really a good standing on who you are and what you're talking about or if you've made something or somebody... Um, of yourself, you know, so it's a very, very nice, simple time for the leaders to come out. I uh, talked about leaders since ages ago, um, stepping into leadership and a next level program where you are naturally leading. Not every single person needs to be the politician of politicians. It's just about um, being strong and stronger yet for other people and then having other people rely on you or lean on you a little bit if they're not strong yet in that way. But also you don't have to be just like a pimple, like standing there like I'm the strong guy. Um, you also probably have uh, issues. There's probably also cavities in your aura. There's probably also obsessions and faithlessness and, you know, like distance, you know. And uh, here we are all trying to hold you together as well. So uh, there are lots of us that are wounded also. And I understand that we're not proud, but the time is now. So next week or two, it'll become very obvious if you are nominating yourself as a leader or if you are self-nominating to do anything, uh, please don't treat this lightly. So this uh, force within you is not just rudeness. 
sometimes it is a little bit electric um, when we meet somebody who is just like you know what I'm gonna sing you all my songs like right now um, that's uh, an okay person it's just important that you also understand um, where the world is going so I do understand a lot of you guys work online and only really interact online which is a little intense uh, I used to also work like that so like when we are not sure if it's in our heads or if it's outside it gets really really ugly very fast but we have to also uh, be unable to feel sore we have to present we've got to be warriors and um, I do trust that a lot of people um, have to be those lucky ones that um, press that uh, that button press that button every time you press that button every time you speak or every time you say those words or you sing that song like there is like an upliftment of other people's spirits or there is like a certain type of sugar or honey uh, that comes through from doing something again and again so that's how you make businesses out of um, things that you didn't even freaking think were important it's not just about making a business it's about having your say it's about having a stand being valued person in your community and being an interesting person to yourself but of course you know there's also the beginning of another world so there's also another way um, I don't necessarily have to talk about this uh, there are certain people that are knowing enough and they're, uh, they're, they're not questioning enough and maybe that's already an aspect of you within yourself you just don't need it and you're like you know what I'm actually quite happy just swinging in my hammock today and thinking about the world that's also a beautiful thing um, that's also a place of leadership believe it or not so that strength and the compassion you have for yourself or that unquestionability is also a state of health and connection so basically what we're doing now is we're allowing the health that we have if you do have um, even within your own body um, allowing that health that you have to vibrate outwardly and to be able to in a way infect another person like um, having a laugh with somebody else as an infectious thing you know being a friend to somebody else is infectious um, having a compassion having a good heart you know having a funny sense of humor having uh, an interesting job or a career having a curious thing uh, to do or curious thing to carry uh, that curiosity and that funkiness and freshness can sometimes mean the world to other people so that heartiness and um, that lack of censorship is uh, what we I feel all need and there is a greater more compassionate brilliance that is happening in the world that can actually now start to support the people that are um, maybe boring to themselves now because of how much time you've spent talking to yourself inside your own head um, but a very very exciting and uh, also compulsory like this is a must watch person or this is a must see shaman or this is a must contact uh, guide and also that healer Chiron and um, Aries very close to Jupiter awakens fully uh, soon because Chiron is uh, retrograde and you'll see why you had to do it you you'll you'll think again like why you didn't if you've got something to display if you've got a masterful role already uh, don't be afraid that you are a master and a strong person in your territory for your era you know in your vicinity maybe there's nobody else like you okay in your culture maybe there's nobody else like you so if you're a painter or if you're an artist, if you're just a visionary, if you're anybody, if you're just a good person, maybe there's other people like you, but there's not really a person exactly like you. So that's a very, very amazing way to become an infectiously good and lush person. And then that is going to unveil itself and reveal itself by the end of Virgo. So when we go into the DC point and we'll eventually hit the equinox, which measures half the year from Aries, you know how I was saying that March is where the year starts, we'll see results. So um, at the moment, uh, these are hard to see. Uh, those things are really, really hard to swallow. Uh, Libra is a lump sum. I'm a Libra also. So that lump sum feeling as we go into the global seventh house, September, October, is going to be huge for some people. So there could be a huge arithmetic there for you so businesses can grow three or two times faster um, than they usually would and also like your name can spread there's like a viral energy also there uh, very quick or like what you do can gain momentum fast during these uh, months and also during these years 
So if you've um, ever wanted to be you and to flourish and to thrive just as you, a few ancestors have also wanted uh, to be free people. And uh, if you yourself thought about this, like what would it take to change the course of history? This is the time. And this is the moment. So thank you very much, you guys. I have uh, probably put some stuff in the caption section below. Uh, please check out my Patreon channel. Please have a look at my uh, music channel. If it is done, I will post it here. If it's not done, it's not done. Uh, then there's also uh, this uh, very ugly channel that I'm making about like humanity and uh, plant medicine. If you don't want to watch it, that's also okay. I understand. I do understand that there is always going to be a uh, slightly sweet and sugary part of astrology and I don't believe that every single person needs to go into the harsh cruel details of what is life on earth but I do feel that for some people it would be very uh, good to see. Um, so I'll be posting all of my more quirky and slightly intense material on that YouTube channel in a section below and all the sweetest stuff I will keep here. So thank you very much. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you for being a friend of my channel. See you next time. Bye.